So do we actually need to sharpen our images for print? Well, hello and welcome to this photo speed video with me, Tim Jones. Today, what we're going to be looking at is something I'm quite intrigued about and I get asked a lot about, and that is print sharpening and how much sharpening we should be adding for different papers. And also if we need to add any sharpening to our prints as well, because it's another process or can we just sharpen for screen and print? So I'm really interested to see actually how some prints come out because it's not something I've actually done before to have a play around with sharpening and actually look how different papers react to different levels of sharp. Now, before we get started, as always, please don't forget to subscribe to the Photospeed YouTube channel. Also, to go on photospeed.com and download the free ebook called The Photospeed Art of Printing. So it covers everything from printing to color management to bookmaking to framing, absolutely everything. So just go on photospeed.com and download The Photospeed Art of Printing. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Photospeed newsletter as well to keep up to date with all the news from us here at Photospeed and also for some special offers and discount codes as well. Okay, enough of me talking about that and doing the housekeeping, let's dive in to print sharpening. Now, I always say that print sharpening is something that is a little bit of a mystery sometimes and can kind of confuse people. There's a lot of information out there. Now, I've been doing some research. I've been looking at some videos and some reading a lot of things on what people do and how they think about sharpening. And there doesn't really seem to be a definitive answer. So it comes down to personal preference, I suppose. Now, the first thing with print sharpening that we need to do and to make our life a lot easier is to take pictures that are in focus and sharp. Now, I know that goes without saying, but if you do that with your camera, get your shutter speeds up nice and high so it freezes the action, if that's what you're going for, then it makes your life so much easier. It's 80% of the job, to be honest. There is always gonna be a little bit of softening because of the capture device you're using. There is always gonna be a little bit of softening just because of the process, the digital process of capture and saving and things. So we need to add that back in with a very basic kind of adjustment. Now I'm gonna dive into Lightroom in a minute and I'm gonna show you kind of my sharpening process. Now I know there are loads of ways to sharpen. I'm gonna just have a look at Lightroom but you can transpose it to other ways of sharpening. In Photoshop there are probably eight different ways of how to sharpen your images. It's about which one you like. This video is more about actually finding out what we need to do to sharpening for print more than a sharpening demonstration. Now, I always like to divide sharpening up into two parts. We've got sharpening for print, which is what I'm looking at today. Then we've also got creative sharpening. Now, this is probably a video I'll probably do a bit more in the future. However, today we're focusing on the print. Now, creative sharpening is where we apply sharpening, be it through a high pass filter or Lightroom, and we apply it perhaps to a mask. And we kind of have a look and we localize that sharpening. So perhaps if it's a portrait, we could really sharpen the eyes as it goes round and really make them pop by using sharpening as an editing tool. And it's quite nice to think of it that way. And also we can choose, we might not want the background sharp. You don't want to sharpen a lovely creamy Balkan kind of effect, this shallow depth of field. We don't really want to sharpen that because we want that out of focus. What we want to actually sharpen is perhaps the person's head or the flower we're taking a picture of to make it really stand out from the background. So that's where creative sharpening can come in. And there's loads of videos um, from other people as well. I know um, Alex Nail, one of our photographers, has done a fantastic video on creative sharpening and having a look at how to use it in landscape photography. So have a check out of Alex's video as well. But today what we're looking at is sharpening for print. So all your sharpening up to this point is kind of a little bit of a given that we're sharpening for screen. So there's gonna be a few basic kind of adjustments we're gonna put in. I'm not gonna do anything too fancy, 
but I will take you through kind of what I'm doing and just make it nice and sharp for screen sharpening. Now, usually screen sharpening is absolutely fine for luster and gloss and semi-gloss type of papers and variety type of papers, etc. But that usually goes for up to sizes of A2. Because when we're sharpening for print, we do have to think about the print size as well. Because if we are printing very small, we probably won't have to add as much sharpening for print. But if we're printing very big and we've enlarged and interpolated the image as well and made this massive enlargement, we may need to resharpen that. And that is where sharpening for print comes in. Now, Capture One actually does this all for you in the export um, module. You can actually just tap in what size you want and it applies sharpening for you. And it does it very well, to be honest. Also, if you're enlarging in Photoshop, you've got the option to um, click on preserve details and use that algorithm. And that adds a little bit of sharpening to the edges for you and keeps everything nice and crisp as it should do. So there's lots of automation that goes on in the background. Lightroom, it does add a little bit, but you can change the levels of that, which is in the print module, which we'll look at in a second. So there's a few options and a few things we need to think about. Now I've got the P700 sat here and I'm gonna make some prints at A3. So I'm just gonna do a very basic print sharpening for screen through Lightroom. And then I'm gonna print out three pictures. I'm gonna print it on a PF Luster, a Legacy Gloss, a Smooth Cotton. The Luster and the Legacy I'd imagine to be very similar and not having to add too much above screen sharpening. So I'm more looking at how the sharpness of the picture reacts to different kind of paper types, to be honest. So be quite, I hope it's gonna be quite interesting anyway. So let me make some prints and we'll do that comparison. And then what I'll do is I'll start adding different levels of sharpening and make the comparison as well. So hopefully, I'm hoping this comes across on video um, and what we can have a look at and do as well. Okay, so let's make those basic prints, our kind of our control prints to start with, and then we'll have a play around and add different levels of sharpening to see if it actually makes any difference. Okay, let's dive into Lightroom. Okay, so here I am in Lightroom. Now I'm in the development tab at the minute. Now I've imported my picture here, a um, bit of a stock image, so not one of mine, I'm afraid. Nice um, chameleon, I think, could be. I want to say that, but it's more, could, could be something else as well. So um, apologies if I've uh, got that wrong. So what I want to do very simply is I just want to add a little bit of sharpening to this. And just for screen, just to have a look. Now, it's probably had a little bit of sharpening already, which it looks like, looks pretty good. But what I want to do is I just want to improve that very slightly because I think we could add just a little bit more in here as well. So I'm gonna focus just on this area here. I'm just gonna zoom in. Now you can do this in obviously Photoshop with the unsharpened mask and the sharpen filter, um, but also you can do this with the raw filter in Photoshop as well, because it has the same settings as Lightroom. And they're really quite useful as well, because there's a little trick to it that I will show you in a second. So what, generally what I'm doing is, from experience, I usually put in about 40 point or 45 points of sharpening as, as a base kind of level, as a starting point. Because I don't want to over sharpen this picture because it's pretty sharp already. And I'm only going to A3 and things, so I don't want to add too much. And I want somewhere to go if I need to add any more sharpening. Now the radius, we can go up and down on this and you can see the picture very slightly getting a little bit sharper and the contrast increasing on those edge pixels, which is how sharpening works. It basically finds the edges by looking at contrast and then sharpening the darker parts effectively, increasing the contrast. So basically the radius is just increasing what is actually gonna be, the contrast is actually gonna be increased on, going backwards and forwards here. So I normally, for me, so I don't usually add, too much on the radius. I'm usually about 1.5 around there. It's just a base level. The detail again is a fine adjustment here as well. Now we can do this by eye, but if you hold the Alt key in Lightroom and then click on radius, what happens is it turns all gray. You basically get the high pass data or the high frequency information, which is the detail. And we can 
just see how much. So you can see here, three pixels is going to be way too much. You're going to get horrible little artifacts of things. I normally say just to bring it right down to the bottom, bring it up very slightly so you can just see it coming through. So actually, I'm probably around 1.2, 1.3 mark. Let's go for 1.3. Now, with Alt still held down, I can go onto the detail and I can adjust this as well. And you can see if I go right up to the top, hopefully you can see that, that there's all these horrible artifacts happening. So what I want to do is just bring it back until I stop seeing those artifacts. And we're probably going to just be around 20. Okay. Now, the last thing we can do is the mask. So I'm just going to zoom out because the mask tool in Lightroom is actually very powerful. If you go up and down, it, it appears like nothing's really happening, to be honest. But if I hold Alt and hold it, everything goes white. So everything at the minute is going to be sharpened. But if I just gradually start to move this slider up, parts of the picture start to turn to a gray and a black. Everything that is black will not be sharpened. So very power, very quickly we can mask and put a little bit of creative sharpening in because I don't want to sharpen any of this background, which is lovely and blurred because of the shallow depth of field. I just want to sharpen this little chap here. So if I just click, then I can start to just sharpen the bits I want which is the main focus, which is this part here. And very quickly, I've just created a mask. So we've got a value of about 64 anyway. Now, that's how very quickly you can achieve some quite good results. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print these and we're gonna have a look at them and just compare different paper types. I'm gonna keep all the settings the same. So all these settings here are gonna be the same. And I'm just gonna go into my print dialog and I'm gonna select the appropriate profile print them on the P700 I have here, keep the rendering intent on perceptual exactly the same, and the media types I'm gonna change obviously for semi-gloss and matte papers and things. What I'm gonna do though is I'm just gonna print this, but what I want, you probably notice in Lightroom, we've actually got a print sharpening option in here. So I'm gonna actually turn that off when I print these because I don't want anything else being affected. I wanna see what's going on if I sharpen for screen. I will come back to this though, and we will do a test print just to see actually if it's a nice easy option, because if we can set that and just click print, and we don't really have to worry too much about kind of what's happening and things, we don't have to have a little bit of guesswork in our sharpening tab about what how we should be sharpening or adding, then use it, I think. And it goes back to my, my favorite saying of just being able to click print. So. Hopefully this will simplify our life a little bit more. Okay, so let's give that a print and we'll have a look. So I've printed all the prints. They've all come off the uh, printer and look great. Now, really interesting that I've done some basic sharpening. So on the legacy here and also on the PF Luster, We've got kind of quite good match between screen and print, to be honest. And the level of sharpening looks pretty good. It, it, it's a good sharp print, to be honest. Um, I wouldn't want to add any more because I'd probably get some artifacts in there. So hopefully, well, I'm, I'm quite happy because that's kind of proved my theory that screen sharpening on a luster type of paper and also kind of a brighter light type of paper like the Legacy is a little bit warmer as well so there is a slight difference perhaps in the green here just because of the white point of the paper i'll show you some close-ups and things so hopefully you can see that as well the these are actually pretty good i'm, I'm more than happy with these so at a3 and i would say up to a2 i think screen sharpening should be absolutely fine we haven't really had to do anything dramatic um i've just sharpened them to my liking on the screen and printed them and they've come out pretty good where the difference has occurred though is on the matte prints because they have softened very slightly but also you'll see the colors change very slightly as well they're a little bit lighter to be honest on here that could be because the contrast has gone down a little bit could be the profile could be something different but it's happened on both they've kind of just softened down very slightly and the contrast has gone down. So the effect of the contrast going down has actually lifted the print a little bit. 
On the smooth cotton, it's nice and sharp, but I think it could have a little bit more bite to it. So we're gonna have a play around and just increase the sharpness very slightly now to have a, have a little bit more bite on the smooth cotton. Now also on the textured paper, I think it does need a little bit more adding in to, to again, add that little bit of bite. On matte papers, we are just, it's just dipping that contrast level a little bit and giving the appearance of a just a softened image. It's not unsharp, it's not out of focus, don't get me wrong, it's just a little bit softer. So I think on matte papers, we will be adding a little bit more sharpening. So let's dive back into Lightroom and I'll show you two little things we can do to help us get better results out of our printer. Okay, so here I am back in Lightroom. I'm in the print tab at the minute. Now, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do one manually and then we're gonna do one using the sharpen tool as well, which is in the print dialog. So let's do it manually to start with. Now, what we can do, I always like to zoom in when I'm sharpening, is we can just increase the sharpness and the amount of sharpening that's happening. So I would say we're going to have to increase it quite a bit, to be honest, um, and bring it right up to about, I think, about 70. So we're going to add a little bit more in there. Also, what we're going to do is hold Alt again, and I'm just going to go back into this gray view here with the high frequency information. And I'm just going to bring our radius up a bit to about two, just increase it very slightly. So the detail I'm just going to bring in as well to about 45. Now you'll probably see there's some artifacts going on in there. Now what I'm hoping is when I print this, and hopefully, the drop of contrast in the paper and because of the smooth nature of it and, and also the texture of paper as well, a lot of these artifacts will be hidden by the grain of the paper and things. That's what I'm hoping. So let, let's find out and see if that's true. So I'm just going to leave the mask as it is because that's a nice comparison between the two. And I'm just going to give this one a print exactly the same. I'm just going to turn off. I'm not going to tick the box that says print sharpening. I'm just going to print this one nice and straight. Okay. So what I've done is I've just gone back to our original settings now and brought everything back down. So we've got 45, 1.3, 20, and 64, because that was the settings we printed those control prints with. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the print dialog. I'm not going to do anything in the develop tab. I'm going to go into the print tab and I'm going to click on print sharpening. And I'm going to set it to matte paper because I'm going to print this on the smooth cotton to see if it makes any difference. And I'm going to just put it on standard. We've got options here, low, standard, and high. I'm not sure what levels of sharpening these add, to be honest. So nice experiment, because I haven't really done it before. One of those I keep meaning to do, but never get around to. So I'm just gonna print this on standard and just see if there's any difference between my development adjustments and clicking the print sharpening within the development tab. So let's print those off and we'll have a look. Right, so they've come off the printer and I've done some close-ups and things of them. Kind of drowning a little bit in prints here, but we will soldier on. Now, I've got my control image here. This is the one we printed off with the basic sharpening for screen. On, and this is on smooth cotton, this one here. Now, this print I've got here is with my manual adjustments. Now, hopefully, you'll be able to see that the manual adjustments have made it a lot contrastier and a bit darker. And all I've done, I haven't, I haven't adjusted um, contrast or exposure or absolutely anything. All I've done is increased the amount of sharpening in the print. And it's just brought everything in a little bit for me. So it is quite powerful and you can use it as a, a tool in that way. Now, yeah, just allowed us to give a little bit more bite to the print. I would say, actually, I can't see any artifacts in there or anything horrible going on. So I'm quite happy with that level of sharpening, to be honest. And it may, hopefully, it might work on, on your systems, kind of those, those kind of levels. So please give it a go. Everyone's system is going to be slightly different, though, be it Photoshop or Capture One or things. But you can apply these kind of basic kind of alterations to it and give it a go. 
Now let me just compare it to the luster print because this was kind of our benchmark, wasn't it? That kind of was, which was our screen kind of print and gave us a qu quite a good rendition, to be honest. Now looking at it, it's not bad. It isn't far off. I'd even say that the matte print is possibly a little bit sharper, has a little bit more bite to it. So it could be that I need to just pop a little bit more in on the luster. But when I saw it on its own, it looked absolutely fine. It looks great. We brought that contrast level as well back in. So they look very similar now. So, so I'm quite happy with that. That's kind of affirmed what I was thinking. Okay, so now let's just look at the print dialogue and the print sharpening option where I put it on standard for matte papers. Now hopefully you can see here that they're, they're very, very close. To be honest, there's, there's not much difference between the two. I would say that the print dialogue is possibly, possibly I can see a few more artifacts. So it's, it's put a little bit more sharpening in than I did on my manual adjustment in the development tab. So possibly we could go down to the low setting and that would give us some pretty decent results. However, it's done a really good job. And I think if you're thinking about making your print life and your printing workflow nice and simple, it's a lovely thing to use. Capture One has it as well. Um, Photoshop doesn't at the minute. Um, you'd have to just add a sharper mask and things. But it works really well. It's done a really good job. And the more I'm actually looking at it, talking to you, the less difference I'm kind of seeing, I think. I thought I saw some artifacts and things, but actually it's pretty good and pretty kind of close, to be honest. Compared to the luster print as well, it's pretty much the same. Um, I would say the smooth cotton is probably a little bit sharper, to be honest. So probably need to add a little bit more to the luster here. So. Yeah, if that option's there, I think it's more than happy to use it as well. But we can definitely see that from our original print here, it looked a little bit washed out, but actually just by adding a little bit of sharpening, we've kind of brought it all in and looks really, really nice, I think. It looks great, matches the screen quite well. Well, that's kind of, I think, affirmed my kind of views really, that sharpening for screen will, in most cases, for the gloss, gloss luster, legacies, brighters, semi-glosses, all the pearls and things as well, you shouldn't have any problems just sharpening for screen, perhaps just popping another 10 points in, as we found there, just to bring in the sharpening a little bit, but sharpen for screen. We don't want to see any horrible artifacts on there or be over sharpened. So very much less is more with sharpening. But for matte papers, we do need to increase it quite a bit. I mean, I put like 25 points of sharpening back in or 30 points of sharpening, shall I say, back in and increase the radius a little bit. And it got very close to the luster print that I printed off. With also the textured papers, I'd expect to see the same results as well. And I have that we need to add those extra 30 points of sharpening in on the amount just to bring things in a little bit. But another thing to bear in mind is when you're sharpening, it will dramatically change the contrast just by changing one slider and adding in a little bit more amount and a bigger radius. We can see that we've gone from quite a, a bland kind of contrast to quite a, a strong contrast image as well, a high contrast image. So that is something to think about when you're sharpening as well. So it's worth doing some test prints, to be honest, and to have a look at your level of sharpening. Start with screen sharpening, because that is gonna be the key. Obviously start with an in-focus image. Start with some screen sharpening and sharpen to your level. If you do start to see it looking, I always call it a little bit pixely or a little bit crusty around the edges and things, there's probably some artifacts coming in. We don't want to see that. Some people can hide those with some grain, but it is a very specific look adding grain to your picture. So it's almost that film kind of look. It's not for everyone, so but it's worth having a play around as well. But also have a look at the print sharpening option in Lightroom because that seems to do a pretty good job, to be honest. Um, on standard, I would it, it went a little bit too far for my liking. 
However, that was my liking. It looked absolutely great. I couldn't really see many artifacts. I, I thought I did, but actually it was pretty close, to be honest. It was very close. You'd have to stare at it for a while like I did to actually start to see those artifacts coming in. But maybe I put that on standard. So maybe for me and my kind of level of sharpening I want in my work, we put it on low. But the big thing with print sharpening is if you are enlarging, so if you're going bigger than A2, if you're printing billboard size or whatever, you will need to increase the sharpness when you're enlarging to that size. Now this all depends on your camera sensor and how big it can go. And most of us are probably kind of limited to A2, um, but if you do have a big roll machine and you've got 44 inches and you wanna print a big print, then we do need to increase that sharpening. And I'm afraid using the processes I've kind of looked, to looked at today, it would be running a couple of tests, perhaps do some strips of the image. So make it click print. So it does an eight inch strip, just cancel it on the printer, print it off, and then just compare and see what levels of sharpening is acceptable for you. And you've always got to think about with sharpening as well, that the viewing distance. So the sharpness of the image may be looking a little bit kind of artifacty or maybe even pixely when you actually get right up close to it. But when you look at it from an actual proper distance, and I always say the distance that you should view a print is the longest edge of that print. So if we've got an A A3 like I have here, we should always view it on this longest edge. So it's always that kind of length for us. Any closer than that, we will start to see some artifacts possibly, especially on the bigger prints. If you ever go to a gallery and they've got absolutely massive prints on the wall, if you're allowed, try and get quite close to them because you'll start to see the grain if it's shot on film, but also you might start to see a little bit of breakdown pixel, pixel wise and things. Shouldn't see too much to be honest, but you may. Um, and it, but if you step back to a good six feet, then they look perfect. They look absolutely pin sharp and lovely. And that's another thing to consider as well. Well, I hope that's kind of, kind of been useful. It's a, a bit of a different video this week. I've kind of showed you how I would think about print sharpening and things and run through a bit of an experiment, to be honest, just to see and affirm my own thinkings and teachings as well, masking as well. So I'm hoping that has lifted the lid on sharpening for print and hopefully shown you it, it's not that it's not that complicated, I suppose. I know you can dive in and there's loads of blogs and loads of videos and things. Don't worry, I've I've kind of watched them when I'm doing this. And like I said, there isn't really a definitive answer. But I like to think, keep things simple. And if we can just get to that magic, just click print, then it makes things a lot easier as well. So have a play around, see what works for you. You may be going into a third party plugin and click on one of the like Topaz and things. Not a problem at all, but do some tests and see what works best for you. If you find one that works, kind of stick to it and you're sticking to that certain size as well. But if you are printing big, just be aware that you will need to add some sharpening to it because as you enlarge that file, then things will start to soften very slightly. Okay, so as always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So don't forget, also, we release new videos every Thursday. And also, don't forget the Photospeed Art of Printing ebook, which you can download for free on the Photospeed website. And also don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter for weekly updates and voucher codes and all the amazing news and the exciting news we've got coming from Photospeed this year. Okay, so until next Thursday, bye-bye.